Okay, and so we shall try to wind up uh, Ascarit, uh, studying about Ascarit. And in today's class, we will just talk about equine Ascarit and 102 poultry Ascarit. In the equine Ascarit, we are having two parasites that is, one is Parascaris equorum, another one is uh, Auxiris equi. So, of course, this is an online class. I will not very much in detail and in the pathogenesis and all this but I will I will try to make in the most simplified form simplified way so that you will be able to grasp through online I know how hard it is difficult I mean how hard it is to give a full concentration online so I will try in a crisp and in a simplified manner okay so Yes, I told you that there are two Ascaris, Ascarit infecting equine. One is Par Ascaris equarum. Earlier, this Par Ascaris equarum was. Oh, nowadays you may also call it as uh, Ascaris megalocephala. Yeah, Ascaris megalocephala because it is having a large head. Okay, so being that Ascarit. This parasite, the female is really large, up to 50 centimeter, while the male is around one feet. Okay, so in their general morphology, I mean, in their general characteristic, they are, they will be located in the small intestine, and their life cycle will be direct life cycle. Very, very simple one, very, very simple life cycle. Then we shall just see, this is the, my friend have sent me the picture, this is Ascarit of, Equine, this is actually a, a postmortem of a donkey, and they could find many ascarid in the intestine, in the small intestine. See, this is really large one, it will be around 40 45 centimeters long. And these are the males, and these are the female. This, this one, these two are the big ones, are the female. Okay, so if you can see, if you see here, this is the egg of ascarid of Parascaris equorum, and you see there is a thick. Uh, thick egg shale which is covering the uh, unsegmented embryo. Okay, if you see the life cycle here, as I told you that the parasites they will be locating in the small intestine and the eggs will be voided out in the environment when the environment as the parasite is incapable of hatching. That's why the larva one and the larval stage will develop inside the egg shell and the same it will be entering in the small intestine it will it, it will be ingested through or mouth through drinking water or through food and subsequently it will undergo tracheal route of migration we are very well versed with what is tracheal route of migration okay so uh, that means in this i will just tell once again that the parasite the egg of the parasite on entry the egg of the parasite on entry into the small uh, only entry through mouth and they have arrived in the small intestine in the small intestine the parasitic egg hatch due to the presence of certain reducing condition that means in carbon in presence of carbon dioxide in presence of bile in presence of um, gastric acids and, and, and certain enzymes like chitinase and esterase and they hatch out in into a larva this larva subsequently will find its way on the mm, on the intestinal wall and when they have come to the intestinal wall they enter into the hepatoportal vein coming to hepatoportal vein to the liver subsequently in the liver certain hemorrhagic conditions they cause and subsequently they have come to the lung once in the lung they are arrested in the uh, in, in the alveolar capillaries and subsequently if you know that once the, uh, they are rested in the alveolar capillaries and the adjacent to the alveolar capillary is the alveolus, alveoli or alveolus and they traverse, they penetrate from the alveolar capillaries to the alveoli and subsequently they were taken back to the intestine through trachea, bronchi, and, bron uh, and, and, and all this. Okay. In this way, when they come comes and when they are inside the alveoli, the parasite causes a pathogenesis. 
this is known as verminous pneumonia, V E R M I N O E S. Okay, so when it if she verminous means that means uh, it is a pathogenic condition caused by one verminous. We will see verminous enteritis or verminous uh, uh, colic and all this in subsequent times. Okay. So this is the pathogenesis, of, as I told you, the coughing, this due to pneumonic conditions will be the most evident form, and eosinophilia, and the eosinophil count will be high, and there will be diarrhea, and which will be a fitted odor, yeah, that will have a bad smell, and the horse will be in poor condition. Let me remind you that in case of parasitic condition, parasitic infections or an infestation, as I told you that, the, the mortality will not be high. I'm repeating, the fatality or the mortality will not be high, but the morbidity is high. That means in a flock, almost everyone will get the infection and what they cause, ultimately what impact they cause is there will be reduction in the performance. You see, they, because viruses and bacteria, they come and go, they come and go, but the parasites are the one which will be staying with the livestock forever. So they will continuously cause, uh, they will continuously cause uh, in economic losses in terms of reduction in milk production, reduction in growth, and reduction in the school wool growth, and reduction in egg laying, and all this. So for a farm, especially organized farm, parasitic conditions are really notorious and really they are causing a hindrance to increase in the production. Okay, so that's why the, the parasites in case of notice, we are not having much organized farm. So the conditions is not that evident, but in mainland, in mainland India and in developed countries, these parasitic conditions, they are really, really an important. What are the treatment? We, of course, this is ascarid, so simple treatment. I mean, simple drugs, what we know of, bendazole, mebendazole, and thiobendazole. Maybe, okay, this will really work okay, at the dose rate of 45, 44 milligram or 50 milligram thiobendazole. Or fenbendazole, usually 5 to 10 milligram. Mebendazole, this dazole, albendazole, mostly they work within 5 to 10 milligram. Okay, the good thing and the plus point of untelmentic is that the level of safety is really wide. That means in normal condition, the animal could tolerate or the animal might tolerate 10 times of the dose also, many a times. That, that means they, they are having a very wide safety index. That is the good the plus point, but the negative point or the demerit is that the parasite, as they can tolerate the wide range of safety, people they they I mean the, as the animal could tolerate a wide range of drug dose. I mean they are having wide safety index. That people are just uh, giving simply the that means detrimental use of the parasitic drugs are there. So so what are its consequences? One is number one is parasites they are developing antihelmetic resistance against these kind of drugs. They in in nowadays the most many parasites they are uh, resistant. That means they are no longer effective against the commonly used antihelmetic or uh, antiparasitic drug. Number one. Number two is that the feed the drug residue in which have come into the environment that is causing environmental contaminations. This is really of a great concern in nowadays because people are detrimentally they are simply using the drug and the animal pass out the 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 unmetabolized drug and they are contaminating the environment. Ultimately we consume those drug to fertilizers it means when the animal refuse or animal dung or is used as fertilizer and ultimately we are consuming again. So this is really of a matter of concern in 
nowadays. Okay. So this is no longer linear, uh, and this is a kiss. This is no longer linear course, but I just want to highlight because uh, this just for your for for your knowledge. Okay, there is one. This is known as herring one disease. Okay, which is uh, contracted through eating herrings like a fish, okay, marine fish mostly. Okay, so this is no longer in the course, but anyway, I'm just highlighting. And now comes another uh, another parasite, okay, that is Oxyuridae. This family, I, as I told you, that there are three super family and the Ascaridida. One is Ascaroidea, another is Oxyuridae, last one is Subuluroidea. So in Subuluroidea, mostly these are poultry, Ascarid, we will just have she one or two parasites, it's just just few names. And under Oxyuroidea, we are having one that is Oxyuroidea family. Okay, so what is the meaning of Oxyuroid? Oxyuroid means that means there is a bulb in the esophagus. There is bulb in the esophagus. Okay, so this is a parasite. Hmm. The posterior portion of the esophagus is having a bulb. This is the intestine and this is the esophagus and the posterior portion of the intestine is having a bulb here okay to number one number two the posterior end of female tapers okay the posterior end of female tapers that means i will see the i will show you the picture and another one is male is having a single pin shaped spicule that's why it is commonly known as pin worm. It is commonly known as pin worm. And another characteristic is that unlike normal Ascaris or those parasites under the superfamily Ascaroidea, the egg is having a, it is flattened on one side and there is a plug at one pole. Of course, the life cycle is direct. And once we come to the next slide, you will see. Okay, so under this, we, I'm just pointing out one parasite that is Oxyuris equi, which is unlike in case of Ascaris, located in large intestine. Now comes Parascaris equorum, they locate in the small intestine, whereas Oxyuris, they locate in the large intestine. This is the female, okay, as I told you that this is the female, the posterior end you know, of female greatly tapers, and this is the male, this is a female. Okay, so the male is having a single pin shape PQ and and there is the egg is having a flatten one side and there is a plug at one pole. This is the characteristic of an zero or mostly pin worm. Okay, so life cycle, simple life cycle, but they the life cycle is important for understanding the pathogenesis. Let's see here. The adult parasites reside in the large intestine, cecum, and colon. And the female, during its lay, egg laying, will come down to the rectum and in the perineal region for egg laying. Okay, so this is the one that is causing pathogenesis. The egg laying habit or the egg laying and the, the egg laying activity of female is the one which is causing pathogenesis. Subsequently, the egg will drop in the in, in the ground and it will develop into L1, L2, L3, and which will be subsequently ingested. Simple as that. Now comes the life cycle. I would like to show you here again. The egg will be laid in the perineal region. They will the adult female will attach her egg in the perineal region and this will be dropped off and L1, L2, L3 will develop inside the egg shell and which will be ingested again. Here in this case there is no tracheal route of migration. There is, I'm repeating, there is no tracheal route of migration in case of Oxyuris. Okay, now comes the pathogenesis. When the adult parasites, they, they, I mean the adult female parasite, she, when she comes down to the to the peritoneal region for egg laying, that causes irritation, that causes itching. So the horse will wrap its uh, the peritoneal region or the base of the tail 
where they will be, um, then the horse will be disturbed. The horse will be stamping and the horse will feel irritation and ultimately they will rub their hind quarter and the, there will be alopecia at the region. If other than that, the adult are not at all harmful. They neither they do not cause um, attach. They do not attach in the intestinal wall. Uh, they are just uh, living in the intest. Or they are just living on the intestinal content only. They do not cause any harm to the intestinal mucosa. What is the thing that is causing? And this is condition. I mean, the disturbance in the animal is the egg laying activity of adult female, which cause irritation and itching, and the horse will be disturbed, and the horse will sometimes the horse will be difficult to control, and there will be uh, an, a condition known as ungroomed red tail appearance due to the horse after it's feeling irritation, they tend to rub their hind quarter. Okay, so this is what the horse will rub each hind quarter and due to constant itching and there will be alopecia at the base of the tail and this is the egg that which is attached to the perineal region. Okay, then and at this time the horse will not behave properly, so this is really a problem for 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 especially in riding I mean race horse and all this. They are really disturbed by their irritation. Okay, so diagnosis is simple as that. It is very, very easy to diagnose once you see. And what people used to do in practice in real senses, they used to, I mean, they used to, uh, for diagnosis, they used to just stick a cellophane tape. Okay, they would just stick to the cellophane tape to the hind quarter and they, they will take the cellophane tape under the microscope and they will observe on the, uh, under the microscope and they will see for the eggs. Very simple one. Treatment, it is all the same with uh, Ascaris equorum. Okay, these are some of the some of the pinworm of other animal. And this is the pinworm which is causing itching, especially in young kids in young children in children and this is known as enterobius vermicularis this is also known as pinworm or many a times it is known as seed worm okay so the rest these are not in your course but at least you know that enterobius vermicularis is the one which is causing uh, irritation in children okay, at least we must know that of, of even though it is out of your course nowadays, but in years in the old syllabus there was this the name these names were given, but now it is out of your syllabus. So at least it is good to know that Enterobius vermicularis is the pinworm of human being. So coming to the last one, the superfamily Subuluroidea. So the subuluroidea, this under this one, we I, there are two names that is given. One is Heterkis galinaram, and another one is Ascaridia galai. Okay, so Heterkis galinaram is, as I told you that they are, they they are located in the uh, large intestine. They are very small one, means up to one centimeter in length. Okay. So more or less one centimeter in length. So they will not cause pathogenesis, heterogeneous candida. But they are really, really important in the sense that inside the egg of heterogeneous candida, there is one protozoa that will be insistent. There will be one protozoa which will be carrying, which will be carried by the egg of heterogeneous candida. Heterogeneous candida is a Roundworm. Inside the egg of roundworm, many a times that there is a protozoa which is also coming along. That is known as um, what is that? Histomonas meleagridis. So that protozoa, Histomonas meleagridis, is really really important, and this will cause a huge mortality in, especially in Turkey. They call it as black head disease that we will study later on. So the importance of heterokis galindra, I'm repeating, is not the direct effect or the direct 
pathogenesis that they cause, but the, due to their action or the, their importance in carrying the protozoa, that is known as histomonas meliacritis. Apart from that one, they are not causing any pathogenesis. Another one is Ascaridae galli, which will be located in the small intestine of bird. And of course, they are also uh, small, but many a times they could cause um, pathogenesis, especially in, in, in broiler and all this. Okay, now we'll just see. Oh, I'm not going in much in detail, all these things. I'm just telling you the pathogenesis, the, the importance. They are transmitting blackhead disease, causing protozoa, known as histomonas meliagritis. Okay, that's why um, his heterogas gallinarum is usually infecting our local chicken, local bird. So, uh, histomonas meliagritis is not very pathogenic for local bird. But it is very, very pathogenic for uh, for uh, for turkey. That's why turkey should never be reared together with a domestic chicken, because domestic domestic chicken they will be carrying heterogeneous galinarum. When the heterogeneous galinarum is present, that means the histomonas meliagritis will come along, and subsequently that. The flock of turkey, 90 to 80 percent, 80 to 90 percent, sorry, it will be wiped off by this protozoa, this domonas meliagritis. Okay, this much. And another one is another parasite known as Heterakis isolongi, and they cause sometimes nodular typhlitis. Apart from that one, they are not causing any disease. Okay, so I'm skipping now. And another one is Ascaridia galli. Ascaridae galli, this is important in bark younger than three months of age. Okay, so deficiency of vitamin A, vitamin B, and vitamin D complex will predispose they will predispose for a heavier infection. There will be uh, there will be stunted growth because the parasites they are just like Ascaris swarm and Ascaris lumbricoides, they will be competing with the host for nutrients for number one. Number two is that they will cause cateral inflammatory conditions in the in small intestine. And when they cause cateral inflammatory condition in the small intestine, absorption of the nutrients will naturally uh, retard it again. And the other thing is that, which is very aesthetic condition, is the egg may be found, I mean the parasites, may be found coiled up inside the egg. So this, this will re regard as economic loss again here. Okay, so with that, I conclude today's for today's class. If anyone is having any doubt, let me know. Oh, if not, thank you everyone. Then on Thursday, we, will, we shall continue with uh, 